Hi, welcome to Reckler Mechanics. My name's Alan, I'm glad you're here. You may have heard the term bones or no bones day. Is it a bones day or is it a bo no bones day? If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then you need to get to TikTok and look up Noodle the Pug. He is a 13 year old pug whose owner checks in with him every day to see if he has bones or not. When he has bones, the, what the owner does is he picks him up, lifts him up, and if he lets him back down and he stands, it's a bones day. And on a bones day, you're supposed to really just go for it. Achieve your dreams. Get that thing you've been wanting to get. You know, just strive and go forward and take the day and seize it because it's your day. If he lifts up the pug and when he sets him down, the pug just collapses back on his cushion. It is a no bones day. And on those days, you're supposed to take care of yourself. Be nice to yourself. You know, have an extra cup of coffee. Take it easy. Cancel the big meeting. Just, you know, just, just take care of yourself. It's a self-care day. And one thing that's interesting about both of these days is about doing what's best for you and keeping your your own self in mind. And I love that. So I thought, I was thinking, what tarot decks would I, do I use on Bones Days? And what tarot decks do I use on No Bones Days? So I thought, you know what? This would be perfect for YouTube. So here we are. I'm going to go through a couple of what my Bones Day decks are and my No Bones Day decks are. So if you want to see what I use, stick around. So on a Bones Day deck, on Bones Days, these are days when you're supposed to go for it and reach for the stars, grab that brass ring, confront the hard subjects, just do the work. And so I'm going to do those first and then conclude with my number bones decks. First, I'm going to talk about the tarot decks that I use on Bones Days. One deck I use is I use, I'll turn it right side up, is the Slow Tarot by Lisa Lacey Bryant. This deck is unfortunately now out of print. It, it is beautiful and it is lush. It is from, made from original uh, oil paintings, which y'all, this deck is out there. I'm not going to do a whole lot through. But this is a deck that for me, while beautiful, makes me confront what's going on in my life. It makes me address the issues and it doesn't really pull any punches, which is perfect for a Bones Day. When I want to get stuff done, this is one of the decks I go to. And when I'm ready to do some of the introspection work, this is the deck I go to as well. So that is a Slow Tarot by Lacey Bryant. Which, even by the name Slow Tarot, makes you think it'd be a No Bones Day deck, but it's not. It is so Bones Day deck. Next is a Sassword Beta Tarot. I, I don't talk about this enough. This is a deck, again, also beautiful, also just really inviting. A little bit off the beaten path of Tarot, so it kind of pushes you a little bit there. But this is a deck that is just multi-purpose, just drives to it and can read for any question. I use this deck a lot. Um, and specifically, I really found how much I love this deck when working through the 36 tarot spread, 36, 30, 365 tarot spreads, a spread for every day. Um, it's available and it's a great book. It was a great thing to do in 2020 because you had the extra time. Um, but I would try to pair decks with different spreads and see if that matched. But when it came down to it, this is a deck uh, I use more and more for just every spread in the deck to see if it worked. If it worked with this one, it was a good spread. If it didn't work with this one, then maybe another deck, but then it just, it just, it was out. So that is the Sasura Vito Tarot. It is definitely a bone stay deck. Next, I want to talk about the Modern Witch Tarot. I did a full walkthrough of this, and I also did kind of a how to bond with a tarot deck uh, with this one. And I did the video and it was good. Um, and one thing that was really interesting about the deck is it says, oh, it's going to be great for emotions. Is you going to really connect with it? But the lack of male representation, um, I thought might, might be a concern. And also the card stock's really thick. But, I mean, I got over that. And the more I use this, the more this really is a Bones Day deck. This, um, again, it's pretty straightforward, just solid Rider Waite Smith clone. But this also just kind of does some heavy lifting too. So this is a deck that when you want, when you pull this out, you know you're gonna you're gonna deal with some stuff. So, but yeah, just just a great deck. You don't see that. So that's the modern day witch. Modern witch tarot is definitely a bone day deck. And the final tarot deck for a bone day that I want to talk about is the urban tarot. This is by Robert Scott. This is a uh, independent press deck that became a mass market when U.S. Games picked it up. And they just did a killer job with the, the production of this. So, um, 
the deck when it came out, independent, it was a little bit square and short and small. Didn't really uh, fit what I want from a deck size, but the images were cool. Definitely um, Thoth based, and I do talk about this as a potential Thoth clone if you're looking for a deck to get into Thoth, but are quite down with Alistair Crowley and Lady Frida Harris's artwork. But this, this one will get you there. Um, I love the size of it. I love how uh, slim it's slim and then tall. But again, Thoth Day decks, Thoth decks are Bone Day decks. You don't pull those out unless you're ready to, to tackle some stuff. And this one definitely does. I mean, obviously it's a little bit dark and gritty too. So, but I love that. The Urban Turo is definitely a Thoth, is, is my Thoth uh, Bone Day deck. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to ramble. I mean, one thing I really like about this is um, I really fell in love with it again whenever I read um, Query the Turo. Which is a great book. Really good book. And it uses that as the um, illustrations. Okay, so when it comes to Oracle decks for a Bones Day deck, Bones Day deck, um, the Oracle of Echoes, this is the first edition, and this box is getting seen some action, so I really need to bag. But this is again uh, by Anna Turian, um, not a new deck. <laughs> Y'all can find lots of work through it. This is one of the first decks I got introduced to when I. It, took to watching Tarot Tube, and everyone just raved about it, and it is so good. It's in a second edition. This is the first edition. It's got the um, the red backs, but the a new edition has the blue backs, which look really cool. The new edition also has extra cards, so I've thought about it, but I, it won't, it would, it would, it wouldn't replace this. <laughs> I would buy it, and I just wouldn't get it. So I'm holding down for it. But this is a great, one I thing I love about this deck is it's balanced. There are corresponding cards, and it really has a lot of light and dark to it. It really does push you and really makes you think about things outside the box. It's definitely not tarot structured, which is exactly what, what I want from an oracle. See, just how great is that? The keywords are great. Keywords are the titles. I, I have, I have, I, it doesn't come with a book. I think there's a book online you can get, but I haven't read it because you don't need it because it's done that well. So when it comes to an oracle for a Bones Day deck, it is the Oracle of Echoes for me. Right? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Sorry, Lo Siento. I have another solid Bones Day Oracle. <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> the Isis Oracle. Um, this is by Blue Angel. Um, Alana Fairchild. Um, this deck, and I think I've talked about it before. This is serious. This deck is serious. Um, obviously gorgeous, because I love pretty decks. Um, definitely needs to be gilded in gold or something. But I used this deck for um, a month, kind of intensively, a couple years ago. And this really showed me what's going on with this deck. Um, in a lot of ways, it seems very typical of a Oracle deck. But when in practice, this thing just brings the power. Um, and you, this is one of those decks that I really feel like I'm connecting with something else. Um, not just my intuition and, you know, my higher nature, but there's, there's something else. So I don't pull this out very often. There, this is the standard size. There is a pocket size that's got the keywords on the back, but I, nope, nope, this is it. So when it comes to the ultimate Bones Day deck, when you're ready to take it on and confront what needs to happen, the Isis Oracle is my Oracle deck of choice. And like I said, I use it like maybe twice, three times a year, max, because it's that, it's that, that much is going on with this deck. When it comes to no Bones Days, I have some very specific things I want to see happen. No Bones Days are decks where I really won't read a lot for myself. Um, I won't investigate. I'll just, just kind of let it go. These are lay on the couch, under the covers, watching great movies, and shuffling cards and just flipping through them kind of days. So decks I do this on are tend to be decks that have kind of a similar aesthetic, also tend to have a little bit more of a softer feel to them. These aren't as confrontational. These are a little bit more just kind of fluffy bunny decks, which can seem like it's a bit of an insult, but it's not because we all have friends who um, give us different advice, right? You have that friend who will shoot you straight, you know, will call you on your on your stuff and won't let you get by. But then you also have the friends who you go to when you, when you want to go, you know, get a cup of coffee, just sit and chill and just have fun and hear about how great you are. So, so I want to talk about, first, I'm going to talk about the Monstero by Joanna Nelson. This is a perfect, perfect No Bones Day deck. Um, it's fun, it's light. Um, one thing I also kind of noticed about my 
but no bone stick decks. And they're all on the little bit bigger side with great art, so I can really get into it. These are decks when I just want to kind of flip through and just kind of engage the artwork a lot. And art's really why I got into, um, one of the reasons why I really got into Tarot is because I love how beautiful it is. And it is a collection of art. And when someone goes through this much trouble to create such great art, yeah, see, that's, see, that's a bone, no bone stay strength card. So, also the companion to the Whispering Spirits, which I'm not going to flip through. Um, it's also a great No Bones Day deck. So, cool. Again, both these are available on her Etsy shop, too. So, Monica Knightson um, it did a back Kickstarter called, and she did the um, Stolen Child's Rope. And this is based on the idea of a Yeats, Yeats poem. Oh, Yeats, look at me. A Yeats poem, um, The Stolen Child. And this deck is... Just so much fun. These are gorgeous backs. These are oracle card size, so they it is a tarot, but uh, some of the artwork really makes me think of the Oak, Ash, and Thorn. But this has got more, basically, children morphed into the animal world because they've uh, been abducted by fairies, um, which is a great idea. So this is almost like a story time deck, and that's one thing I also look for on No Bone Stay decks, are the ones that can just kind of tell me a story and um, entertain me. But the artwork is great. It is beautiful. The cards, again, are big size, so they're easy to handle. I mean, it's not completely the void of point because, you know, it's not just, you know, clouds and fluffy bunnies, but, but this is good. This is a great deck. I am going to do two Chris Ann decks. Uh, the first, my first No Bones Day deck was the Muse Tarot. And this is the Kickstarter edition with the a crazy great um, edging um, with the rose petal finish, which um, I, and I keep the misprint card in there because I think it's awesome because there needs to be two emphasis on this one. But again, this is just beautiful a photo collage art uh, focused on the idea of creativity, but it's, it's awesome too. This is a deck that I got the extended guidebook before it was picked up by Hay House, she pro uh, produced one with Lulu that you could purchase and now it's no longer available. And I made sure to jump on that. Now, all the stuff in the guidebook is on her website, so you can see all the poems and things like that. But on a no bones day, I want a book. I don't want to pull up my computer because uh, I I can't be trusted on my computer on a no bones day deck. On a no bones day, because what I'll do is I'll hit all the websites that just cost me stress. But so, coming up with this book, with this book, this deck, on a nice kind of rainy day, is, is a perfect kind of feed your soul kind of moment. So that is the Muse Tarot. But recently, I just got the Cur Tarot of Curious Creatures, which y'all, I mean, I gushed a little bit in, in my walkthrough, and I know that. Um, and I, I, cause I did not think I would like it this much. So I got it because I made myself a commitment that I love Chris Hansen, so everything she does, I will support. Whatever. Um, until she disappoints me, maybe, but she never, never has it yet. Uh, but this deck, I so saw, I did the flip through it and I loved it. And so, <laughs> middle of the night, I'm, I'm shooting a video, um, capturing my. But this deck just, it, it's got, and um, I've had it about, I'd say, a week. And it, um, it has been kind of my go to deck this week and it has been so much fun. Um, great, great imagery. I mean, it is a little confronting. Um, so, and also too, if you're uh, curious, um, the book talks about who is your special, your curious guide. Mine is, I'm not going to find it, is the three of wands, which is perfect because when I did the little spread, I figured out, and that really corresponds to my birthday. So it's, it's just so good. So good. So that is the Tarot of Curious Creatures. But also too, I would almost say, um, I would, her light seers, I would put as a bone stay deck, if, if we're talking about Chris Anne, um, because... But it would almost work as a no bones deck because it's pretty, but it just, that one seems to do a little bit more work. And these decks just kind of ease you into it and just kind of let you just slide into the beautiful art and the wonderfulness that is Chris Ann. Now, the final tarot deck I'm going to talk about is completely out of print, and I do not know why. Um, it's the Tarot Affirmations. And um, this deck is by Sue Hill. Um, and also, it's got the art by Mary Hanson Roberts in her Universal Weight. These cards, let's drop one, are huge. Again, huge cards. 
Um, but this isn't meant to be a deck of for a tarot reading. This is a deck where you go and you want to look at affirmations. So lately what I will do is I'll, these are, I should be in order because I keep them in order because when I'm looking for a specific affirmation, I want them in order. But I, sometimes I'll just look through this and just read the affirmations and just kind of get, you know, collect my power back and go, but even, but for every card, there are some, uh, some great affirmations. So it's like for death, it's like, I am transformation, a circle with interconnected endings and beginnings, right? I am release. I cut through old habits, attitudes, and free new parts of myself. So great. And even the devil has got some. Uh, my bonds are broken. I'm looking, by looking honestly at repressed desires and feelings. Right? So there's always something positive you can find about a card. So this, and these bags too. Just This is just a great deck for, again, you know, when you, when you want to love on yourself a little bit. When you want to comfort yourself. Sometimes I'll pick one of these up at the end of a reading for a client who's looking to do some self-work. Just something to take with them as a little affirmation as a positive thought for the day so that they can keep the hope and keep striving on to be better and not lose hope. Because losing hope is just the worst, right? One thing that was interesting is when I was looking at Bone Saves or No Bone Saves decks. Bones Day decks tend to be more tarot based with, you know, some oracles there. I bet No Bones Day decks seem to be like a couple of tarot, but a lot of oracles. So I've tripped down my oracle list here. So I've got four. I'm going to talk first about the Sawyer's Nature Portals. This is by Jamie Sawyer. Um, I love everything Jamie Sawyer does. Just absolutely everything. Uh, these are round little cards. Just, they're not big, which is good. A lot of times uh, round cards tend to be big. They are perfect palm size for me. Um, they're all animals. And No Bones Day decks are just animal based decks. I also have the tile version of this, which is just pays off dividends every time. Just, so I use these in conjunction. So, cool. So that's it. So if you just want a little animal loving, you can do that. Next is um, the Nature's Whisper Oracle Cards. This is a deck I got simply because I would see images online and think, oh, this is a really pretty deck. Um, it's kind of fey inspired, but it's got all these amazing colors. These bags are just great. And this is, again, just another deck that I will just kind of flip through and, and get a positive message and really kind of comfort myself. But yeah, this is just, you know, these, these are easy cards. These are, you know, not, this isn't, this isn't too hard to look at. So, like this one, like, gratitude and appreciation. Yeah, little kid and a unicorn, uh, full moon, rainbow. That's no bones day right there. Two of the newer oracles on my collection are the Earthcraft Oracle. This, um, I got, hey house, y'all are killing me. Um, don't hit me up in the middle of the night on Facebook with that. Hey, I got a $10 deck with free shipping. Because I will say yes every time. And I will wake up in the morning going, did I order the Enchanted Compass Oracle? I think I did. Uh, which I kind of regret because I'm not crazy about that, that deck. But this one is just great. I love these backs. Love these fronts. This is a deck that I thought I'd be able to get into this fall. And it just, it hasn't happened. And it, it occurs to me that with all this green, which is not that bad, but all this green and all this kind of fresh earth energy, that this is going to be a spring deck. So I have kept it around. I'm still kind of going through it, still um, investing in learning some of the meanings of the cards. I mean, obviously, I don't I gather, I get it. Um, read the book so that way when spring comes, I am ready to hit the ground running with this deck because I think it will just, it's going to sing whenever the sun comes back. So, go on. so that's Earthcraft Oracle. And then finally, again, also, Oracle cards, big cards. No bones in. Big cards. I got the Awakened uh, Soul Oracle. I saw this a couple years ago when the first edition was out and really, really wanted it. And then, Ethany Dawn re-released it. So I was like, oh, I'm looking at walkthroughs. And I, and I saw, I'm like, oh, she made some changes to the cards. And there were a couple changes that I wasn't crazy about. So I let a couple cards that I didn't like as much as the cards in the first edition keep me from getting this deck. Until the Penumbra Tarot, which I saw was, uh, was up for pre-sale. And I thought, that looks like a deck I can get behind. So I pre-ordered that. And then, it, it, I just love this card. 
Um, and in that moment, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go and get it. So I pre-ordered the same. I ordered this at the same time as I pre-ordered the Penumbra and she went ahead and sent this out first. And this deck has just been everything I hoped it would be. You know, yeah, sure, it doesn't have the card. There's changed cards, but it's still just a really great um, deck. Is that just the quality is amazing? And I haven't got her um, True Love Tarot because I've just kind of hold off to it. It doesn't seem like it's quite my thing. But I don't know. I might have to break down and get it. This might have to break down and get it. So, so that's it. So those are my Bone Stay decks and my No Bone Stay decks. So if you would like to, you know, let me know and contribute to the conversation of what you use on Bone Stays and what you use on No Bone Stays, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.